How's it going my Volvo friends? My name is Gary and this is my channel Weakest of Weeks. If you're a first time viewer, I appreciate you clicking on the video and definitely consider subscribing. Today I'm going to show you the bumper removal or the bumper fascia replacement procedure for this vehicle. Now this is a 2015 and a half Volvo XC60, but this front bumper is near identical 2014 to 2017 for the XC60s. Yes, there's some stylistic things that have changed, but for the most part it's near identical. Now I also believe this will work all the way to 2010 to 2017 XC60s all pretty much shared the exact same body style front end was updated throughout the years but the procedure should be near identical now I will also list some other model Volvos that I believe this will work for I think it'll also work for the S60 but if I'm incorrect in saying that by all means please correct me or if you have any other models that you believe this procedure to work for please comment down below and I'll add it to the list so without further ado Here are the tools required along with a couple optional to remove the front bumper on your Volvo. To begin, we have a T25 Torx socket and a quarter inch drive with a corresponding quarter inch ratcheting wrench. The inner wheel liner bolts tight compact in there so this is great to get in there and remove all 12 of them. There's six per side. Needle nose pliers to remove the three plastic push pins at the lower section of the front bumper. Totally optional is a flat blade screwdriver. There's one rather large plastic electrical pigtail that's kind of stubborn. That'll help remove that. Trim removal tool, kind of optional, but may or may not help you in the removal of the nine plastic push pins at the top of the bumper. Absolute must is a simple pick tool, which will help remove the rubber hose going to the washer fluid reservoir. And lastly, Great for any project is a simple LED light. This one is small, compact, has a magnet, a hook. Regardless of the case, LED lights, always great to have to shed some light on those hard to see areas. So in sum, these are the tools required along with a couple optional that you may or may not need to remove the front bumper on your Volvo. For starters, cut your steering wheel all the way to one side. So that way you free up some space in this inner wheel liner area. Now there's gonna be five T25 Torx screws along this edge that we're gonna remove. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove a sixth T25 Torx screw right there. Now when I'm removing these, I'm actually using a quarter inch drive socket and ratchet. That way you have plenty of other free space in here to remove these bolts. And don't forget about this one at the very top of the fascia where it meets the fender. Same procedure on the opposite side. Go ahead and remove the other six T25 torque screws. Now I am changing up the angle a little bit. I understand it's probably a little bit awkward with this light bar right here, but I wanted to kind of show from a distance where exactly these bolts are and same procedure like I said as the other side you just took off. Now go underneath the vehicle and there's going to be a couple plastic tabs we need to remove. We have one, two, and a third one right there. And how we are going to do that is grab some needle nose pliers and try to pinch in on both of these at the same time. And that will release these. Next up on each side, move back this wheel liner and you'll see a little tab right here. So you don't want to give it too much force. I just use my hands instead of some tools, but basically I push down on this red portion 
and then kind of wiggled it until it loosened up. And now you should be able to just kind of wiggle it a little bit. It'll come out. Same thing on this side. Just push down on it and this will come out. And we'll go ahead. Pop this out. Sometimes that's easier said than done. Go ahead and open the door so you can release the hood. And if you've never opened the hood on your XC60, the little latch is right there. We have a series of nine plastic push rivets, push pins, whatever you want to call them. I have a trim removal tool, but all you need to do is push into the center of them and then you can lift up and they'll just kind of pop out of place or you can use the trim removal tool to kind of pry it up a little bit but really all I am using it in this case is to just push in the center and this is what they look like whenever they need to go back in but that's when they're locked and then whenever you push it in it actually releases this push pin so we'll go ahead and remove the other seven so we'll push all the centers in Now we're just work our way, lifting it up, and removing each one. This one's a little tricky around the hood release, but it's definitely manageable. I'm gonna set it down ever so carefully right here. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at what electrical connectors we need to undo. Looking close up at this on the passenger side, there is the main electrical pigtail that powers this fascia, the fog lights and everything else, right down in there. Now you can get access to it before you release the bumper whenever you remove this inner liner. This connector, it's extremely stubborn. So you can get a screwdriver or push down really, really hard right where my thumb is at, push down. And as you're pushing, kind of wiggle this connector and then it'll pop out so it's very stubborn uh, there is this little kind of mount to it if that falls off it's no big deal you can actually kind of like stretch that out a little bit and then it slides and it'll clip on it like that whenever you're ready for reinstallation but that's unplugged on the passenger side the driver's side has the washer fluid reservoir and as you can see, I leaked some out. Now, this is the reason why I'm removing this bumper is to replace this washer fluid reservoir because unfortunately I do have an active leak. There's a split somewhere. To release this, there is a Y section right there. And I'm gonna get a hook tool and try to undo that and then have it dump all of the contents of this washer fluid reservoir into this drain pan. If you don't already have a hook tool, Go to your local auto parts store, Harbor Freight, something like that, pick up a set. These work wonders. So what we're gonna do here is take the hook tool and kind of run it along the end. And I apologize, you're not really gonna be able to see it too well. But uh, if it was this hose right here, poke it in here and work it around the edge and then that should break it free. But I wanna get it at the end of this Y where it starts. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of space in here. Everything in this washer fluid reservoir is now draining out beautifully into my drain pan to minimize the spillage. So we're gonna give this a little bit of time, drain completely, and then while that's going on, we'll slide this bumper out of the way and set it to the side. Here's a closer look with the front bumper removed. It's actually quite simple compared to some of the other vehicles that I own. Anyways, so now is a great time to do some housekeeping, clean up some crap. I mean, just releasing the bumper, there's some old leaves that fell and then at a quick glance, I noticed there's a bunch of leaves up in here. So I'll go ahead, get out what I can, hand, 
and then get a shop vac and clean some of this stuff up like that. But here it is removed. Now I have plenty of access to get to this washer fluid reservoir, a couple bolts. If you're curious as far as the back side of this fascia, what this looks like. As far as the R design goes, you have the LED fog lights right here, bunch of plastic. This is that Y that I ended up disconnecting the other hose that goes to here. You can't actually disconnect it from these little headlight guys. Speaking of which, I thought this was really cool. How this has a little flap that opens up. This must pop up and spray the headlights to clean those. I thought that was pretty neat. But now is a good time to kind of just poke around, make sure everything is in order and clean up. Again, any kind of crud that's hanging around here. But I'm gonna tip it over and kind of wiggle it. Kind of get some of this old vegetation out of here and just kind of look over it, make sure everything's in order, make sure all the clips are in place before I put everything back where it needs to go. I'll go ahead, set this back down, clean everything up. Here's some of the vegetation I removed, shot back to the rest. A little bit better now, not perfect, but a lot better than it was. Now we're on to reassembly of this front bumper and well it's exactly the reverse order of how we took this off. So to start we have the bumper prepped, it's all clean, ready to kind of push it as close to the body as possible. We're going to get this connector hooked up right down here. The line to the vehicle is hanging right here. Now I did realize that somebody must have been in here before because they're is the line right there the little christmas tree plastic clips that clip into the body were loose so this kind of gave it a little more slack so i actually I hooked those up so this line isn't just flopping around it's actually pretty well secured now so unfortunately what that does is it creates uh, not as much space as it did before so what we may have to do is if we can't reach it by pushing this bumper closer like right now it looks pretty close but just not enough. So probably what I'll end up doing is lifting the bumper up, attaching it, and then going through this wheel liner to reconnect it. But we'll get to that in a minute. But first, we'll go ahead and connect the washer fluid connector right there with this line right there. Before we lift the bumper up, you want to go ahead and have handy these nine plastic push pins or push rivets. What you want to do is get them ready before you are up there and you're kind of struggling to hang the front bumper. You want to start top down. And what we need to do is whenever you release them, you push the center in all the way down. Well, to prepare them to put them back in, you need them to look like this with the top end up. So just kind of wiggle it. Make sure all nine of them look like that. And then you're ready to hang the bumper. So right now we have at least four of the nine plastic push pins in place. I have the three centermost ones in. I have this outside one. This one I could put in, but I'm going to hold off for now. I have all the other ones that need to go in on standby ready to go right there. But first, I want to make sure that I line up the bumper underneath this headlight bracket. There's tabs that need to go into different slots. So be mindful of that, we'll lift it up. And then once that is underneath the headlight, then we are good to clip in each side. So as you can see, this needs to go up. We'll push it in, make sure that's aligned. And then once that's better centered, we can go ahead and fill in the remaining plastic push pins. And of course, these screws from underneath and on each side of the wheel liners. We're now on the passenger side of the vehicle going through this little wheel liner here. We're gonna go ahead and attach this main bumper electrical pigtail harness. Here, a nice satisfying click that is in place. Now I will say because mine was hanging, those little Christmas tree guys were not locked into the body, I had extra slack. So whenever you go to undo this procedure, I highly recommend 
going through this wheel liner first and then detaching it because you probably won't get lucky like I did upon removing it. So before we clip in everything else, this is kind of drooping a little bit, we need to test it to make sure everything works. Not only does the fluid go to the washer nozzles up top, but also make sure these open up and spray the headlights. So we'll go ahead and test that real quick and then we are on to the final assembly. Judging by the fluid everywhere and the fluid on my wall over there, I would say that was pretty successful. I'll take these three push pins from the bottom and clip them into place so here's the hole and we'll just go ahead push it into place like such this one i probably should replace but for now i'm just going to reuse it give it a good wiggle make sure all three of them are secure. Refasten the six T twenty five screws in each wheel liner. the puzzle is to secure the remaining six T25 torque screws on the driver's side. Last thing to do before you call this project done, just go ahead, do an all systems check. Make sure you have the six T25 Torx screws on each side of the wheel liner secured. Make sure you have the nine plastic push pins or push rivets in place at the top. And then lastly, make sure you have the three other plastic fasteners at the bottom secured. That's going to wrap it up on today's video of the removal and reinstallation of the front bumper on my 2015 and a half Volvo XC60. If you know of any other model Volvos this process works for, drop a comment down below and I'll add it to a list. That way it helps other people out. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if it helped you out. That being said, I appreciate you watching it and I'll catch your friends next time.